In this episode, we're creating team apparel your customers will love. Here's how we did it. All right, so here's my finished artwork. Um, really good looking athletic print. You notice we use negative space, non-printing area to allow the shirt color to come through. When you're doing athletic designs, the key, bold colors, high contrast, stick within those one, two colors, use the t-shirt as a third color, the t-shirt color as a third color breaking through your design, stick with bold fonts, and you want to avoid like thin, scripty style stuff. You want to make sure it's really, really athletic looking. Um, this is the finished design. We're gonna rebuild this together so I can show you some of the tricks of how we created these non-printing areas uh, and how we arrived at a cool font. So first, I'm gonna just select the font here, um, create my little area box just by using my type tool. I'm gonna go in and find my font um, and you can notice, you know, I, I have tons of fonts in my library here. I can scroll through. You want to avoid these scripty things. That's not athletic. Anything that's thin, not athletic. When you think team in school, you want to think big, bold, athletic prints. Um, so I'm going to find a font here that looks athletic, and I'm going to show you a quick trick. Uh, so here's one. It looks pretty athletic. But then when you have your font selector open, if you notice if you hover over the font and you hit this Show Similar Fonts button, it'll actually narrow your list to showing similar font styles. So you can go through and find more font styles that, that have the same look and feel. Really cool feature of Illustrator. Helps you find you know, your athletic font styles really quickly. Um, I can pick this high school font. Um, so I'll select that one. And then uh, we're going to move it over here and center it up. And we need to uh, get ourselves a, a little bit organized here. So let's create a new layer. And I'm just going to move my text box up to this layer so we'll stay organized here. I'm going to label this new design so we stay organized. And we'll collapse the other one. We'll expand this one. So um, this is my text. Uh, let's give it a school name. Uh, let's just say uh, this is Rosewood. And I'm going to take my type. Uh, I'm going to just make it red for the sake of this design so we can see the difference. Um, I'm going to duplicate this layer because I just want to keep one in live type and another in um, converted outlines. So I'm just going to convert this one to outlines, uh, command shift or O, um, which makes it an outline so it's no longer a type. I'm going to turn off my um, the visibility on my uh, live type. I'm just going to work with this vector shape now. And what I want to do is duplicate this. So I'm going to just do a uh, Command C, copy, Command F, uh, paste in front. I'm working on a Mac, so uh, if you're a PC user, I'm sorry, use Control. Um, but pasting this in front, so now I have a third layer. And um, I'm just going to add a stroke to this layer. So we're going to add a stroke here. Um, let's pick a stroke color. Uh, let's say we're going to make this black for a stroke. So we'll make it a black spot, and then I'm going to expand that that stroke out. All right. So now we have. I'm going to move this over so we can see the difference. We have these two layers. One has a stroke. One doesn't. I'm going to move the one with the stroke to the back. Uh, I'm just going to label it so we can stay organized. Stroke. Uh, no stroke. Or we could just call it fill. <laughs> uh, so we make it a fill. And now I have that on front. And I'll just pull it up here, center these two things together. Uh, always use your alignment tools to do that work. That way you don't get yourself out of whack. Let's take our stroke and just thicken it up a little bit more. And we want to get it to where it's really filling in and touching all the holes. Um, because we want that negative space to really stand out. And we're just going to duplicate this stroke layer a couple times. So we're going to stroke it again. Um, we'll take the third one and we're going to expand that black even more. And we're going to duplicate it one more time. And the bottom layer we're now going to make red and we're going to expand it. But we have some work to do with what we're dividing. And now we created a bit of a problem that's an easy one to solve. You see this? These little points coming out here, we want to fix that. So let's select these strokes, these layers that have a stroke, and we're going to go into our stroke um, panel over here. So we want to expand this, and we want to say um, we're going to round these caps and uh, align the stroke. Oops. 
get these flat corners here. So you can use a flat corner or you can use the rounded corner. And that's going to soften up those corners so you don't get those spikes popping off the edges there. Um, so to toggle through those so you get the right result that you're looking for. And then you can click off. And now I'm going to take uh, the bottom two and I'm going to just group them together. So um, Command G to group them. Or object. Yep. Actually, that's not true. Um, I need to select these layers. Command G. There we go. We got them grouped. So now they're grouped, and I had my knockout layer on top of them. So I'm going to select this knockout layer. Uh, I'm just going to pull it apart so you can see. Turn off the fill. So this layer that I have selected is the one with the black stroke that I'm going to use to knock everything out. I'm going to just label this knockout. And I'm going to make the fill and the stroke all completely black. And to make it easy for myself, um, I'm going to align it with the bottom layer. So select it, select this fill, turn it back on. Make sure they're all aligned, lined up perfectly. And then we're going to divide these. So uh, I'm going to select this and I'm going to go to Object Flatten Transparency. And I'm going to convert um, my strokes to outlines, make everything a nice vector shape. And then, so now I have this layer and my group, and I'm going to go to um, my transparency or my opacity window, and I'm going to choose Make Mask. And then I'm going to toggle the Clip button, and you can see that when I adjust the clip, um, I now have that top layer as a mask. So when I select this layer, you can see they sort of collapse together. My group is the only thing I can see. I have to go to the opacity panel. And now that text that was on top is now a, 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 an opacity mask that's knocking out the layers underneath it, those layers that I had selected. If I want to undo this, I can just hit release, but I got this knocked out now, and that's, uh, and that's ready to go. Um, and then I can go grab, uh, just like I have here, move this up. Um, I can go grab my team uh, icon. So like, let's say they are the Bulldogs like this. I can copy that over whatever your team mascot is. And a really good idea um, when you're doing designs like this is to do simple things with their mascot logo, right? Either anchor it to the end, like put it right on the side of it, make it the same size and have it match up. Uh, take it over here and make it leading the design or have it sort of set inside like we did the Bulldog here. And you can actually do the same thing. You can add a duplicate layer, add strokes to that layer, make it all black and do that same knockout technique that we just used um, to let the shirt color come through and make your own design with your own clip art um, that's really, really solid and athletic. And then this is a product that we actually printed with our water-based heat transfer formula, which is looking beautiful on those technical polyester garments.